Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to your latest edition of the Young Team as we are on the home straight of the 27-28 season. Probably the season defining match here. Don't win this and I'd say it's probably curtains for a league championship but it's been a good run. I feel we've been a lot more consistent than we've been previously. Just again, Celtic's level of consistency has been you know, a step above. So it can either go to a 6 point gap or a 12 point gap. I'm going to say 12 would be a bit too much but Rangers will be really intrigued to see how this match goes down. Since you last joined us, we have progression in the cup and so so league form. I haven't lost the game, but you know, maybe could win a bit more. But we started off Scottish Cup duty and it was Loney, it's Joseph Gibbons with a hat trick against Morton. Daniel Mackay pulled one back for the visitors, but progression. We then travelled to Capolo for the reverse fixture in the league this time. Gibbons scoring again two goals for Mustafa Amiri off the bench. And it was a consolation by Luke Edwards in stoppage time. So a good win there. Hearts away was a very, very interesting one. A tale of two halves, effectively. Former Motherwell star Stephen White with opening goal. For a constant former aside, Scott Tennant made it 2-0 to the home side. Goals from Mitar Stevic and Thomas Grimshaw got us back in the game at half time at 2-2. And Stevic went on to make it 3-2. We went a bit more defensive in the second half, tried to see the game out. But Tom Johnson was the guy who got Hearts a point and cost us two vital ones. And the last game in the league before today was Aberdeen. Just weren't good enough, just not at the races. Danny Gomez put the visitors in front after that. just a poor bit of defending by Pinto. And it was Andy Smith who came off the bench to rescue a point. But we pushed him, we pushed even a debut for Jim Adamson. But not able to push forward and get the victory. And... Last game was the Scottish Cup quarter final. Both strikers getting on the score sheet with doubles, Gibbons and Stevich. So that was good. Good bit of confidence. Not of you. Two of them can score goals and a meaning. And of course, all, many others that we've got in reserve. And that was here. And the Scottish Cup semi final against Hibernian. So games coming up before the end of the split Celtic at home, Hibs away, Wraith at home, Dundee away and Rangers at home. So, no which two are absolutely massive. Celtic and Rangers, and of course, making sure those other games try and capitalise and take as many points as possible. But this one's big. I think 12 points would just be too far to claw back, just because of how consistent Celtic are. And it's up to us here. We're usual 5-3-2 against Celtic and Rangers. So let's see. We can somehow claw back a victory. Celtic are favourites. They've recruited well. Uh, they just keep sending in young new gen strikers that are just simply incredible. What ones they'll sign, look to develop and, and push on. This is the latest one. Uh, Kuchno, they have signed. Just he's been so good. Seven goals in six games. Twenty four is a bit older than the usual, but he's not going to be there very long, and he'll be getting a move, I'd imagine, in a year or two down the line. But him, Manders, Joanne's been scoring a lot of goals. Nine and eighteen for a. Number 10 is not too bad. Uh, and then you've got your experience then of the two centre backs, Vogel, McGregor, and Morgan. So we'll see how we do. As always, just nice and calm. I was going to say, we're underdogs. You know, we are. You know, if we don't win this, it's over, it's done, I'd say. But we can do this. Never say never. You know what I mean? Just go out there, do what you can. A draw doesn't help anybody. You know, it would still keep the gap at nine points. A win. And there's just that extra wee bit of belief starts to kick in, so we'll see what happens. We just have to be extra vigilant for that very dangerous front four that they have and the, the few good options they've got on the bench as well that can, can turn the game. So pretty bland, Celtic giving most of the ball, a couple of chances. Here's a first set piece, Turnbull plays in, Pinto jumps, unlucky, Gibbons, KMB, Porteous. Pinto, there's a run there if we can find it. Farquhar. Back to Pinto. It's nice, but it's going to cause a, an issue. Here we go out to Grimshaw, ball in. And this is where we need to be wary. That counter attack, we do a five at the back. But there you go, Kucho gets through. And he scores again. Guy's just so unbelievable. Great ball through from Manders, but there you go. You go for that one attack, and Celtic punish you on the counter. Now Turnbull with the set piece. Can we try and get back in this as quickly as we can out to Porteous? Maybe not the guy you want out in the right wing. But it is what it is. Pinto, Stevich. 
I wouldn't quite call that a sitter on the volley, but he hits the post and Celtic can relax a little as Cucho now down the left hand side. And Mendel's got a chance and it's a, a good save from Waddell, but yeah, frustrating. They just punish you, but that's what good teams do. You know, that's, that's what champions do, unfortunately. They punish you. We need to be that team that punishes all positions. Here's Morgan. And there's the run from San Jose. Nobody need him. And unfortunately, top quality stuff from Celtic. That's exactly what it is. Uh, it just... <laughs> it's frustrating. They've just really built a dynasty in this team. In this save, sorry, where just their site recruitment's been perfect. Normally, when I've been trying to win the league with Motherwell in previous FMs, you know, the recruitment's been pretty steady. Um, but they have been a lot better in recruiting for Celtic than previous FMs where they've just seen a lot of dog shit. So, yeah, I have to put my hands up and just say they've been far better. They've utilised their resources very well. So, obviously, we need to come out and play in the second half. We're just going to have to sacrifice a centre back, or what is the wing backs that are playing utter trash? Uh, it's going to be Chris Mecham who will come off and he'll be replaced by Mustafa Amiri. Mm, in fact, do we go Amiri? Well, oh, let's, let's put it 4 3 Let's just go for it. Why not? Absolutely nothing to lose. I could just play the 4-4-2 the, the diamond as I've always been playing, but no. We're a pretty direct team now, so why not just go with a free up front and hopefully get the likes of Stevich. Uh, Gibbons more involved than well. To be fair though, Stevich is in pretty poor, so don't be surprised if I end up hooking him in the next 10 minutes if he doesn't seem to get that average rating up to at least a 6-4 or a 6-5. Most of the guys are motivated, so it's not as if it's uh, an issue there. I'll try and encourage them. Uh, we'll, we'll, call it, we'll take him off. So Stevich replaced, and that is going to be Scott Taylor. He'll come in and play that attacking mid role, and it'll be Amiri. And Gibbons will play as an advanced forward instead. Other changes, Mark Farquhar out, and it will be Chris Cadden, just purely down to the fatigue of Evan, rather go with Cadden, and put him on as a box to box support. But yeah, we're pretty much now just kind of hoping to get one back. If you get one back, then you never know, but it's been risky, and seeing chances that are headed off the line by Greg Taylor is another thing that we are kind of meaning to worry about. So we're going to push forward. Not quite all out attack yet. Well, that's fun when you bring on the likes of Mikey Johnson. And here's a chance of Miri down the right hand side. Cut it back. Gibbons must be. Great save. And that's the chances you need to be taking against Celtic, unfortunately. If you don't take them, that's what happens. But the 6.1 rating probably sums up his day. Both the strikers, him and. Stevich have been very poor, and it shows Amiri with a chance, and he's not having a great day in front of goal either. We've had more chances in Celtic, we just haven't taken them, and Celtic have a lot of the ball. You can see the spine of their team as well, there's a lot of players there performing well, and their positive performances, coupled with the negative performances of our strikers, you can see why the scoreline has us with no goals, then with two. And then with a win. So, as it is, it's pretty disappointing. As I say, I don't expect them to lose four games before the end of the season, especially the fact we need to travel to Parkhead as well. But we'll give it a go. But I feel like our last season, at least on YouTube, is going to end in, in failure. And that makes me sad. But it is what it is. I wouldn't say tactical wonder. We always change to a 5 1 2 2 against Celtic, so it's just FM being fussy. But yeah, that's what it is. We'll keep cracking on. That's the fixture list coming up. And hopefully, you know, if Celtic do make any mistakes, any issues come up, then we'll, we'll hopefully somehow be in there. It's not as if a team's bottled a title on this before. Oh, <laughs> wait. That was us. But anyway, cheers for watching. Much appreciated. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Yeah, let us know what you think of the release date for FM. It should be out now by the time this goes live. I believe we're live on Monday, the 21st. This is going live, and it should be some point a week prior. So let me know who you're thinking of going, etc. And if you're looking forward to the new instalment, which at the time of recording, doesn't have many new features. But yeah, that's what it is. Which is watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.